Have you heard the term self-sealing porous plastic used as a design option for a venting or filtering application? The material is used in a variety of applications from pipette zip filters to catheter vents to hospital suction canister valves. Yet, in all these applications, the pores that are located in the porous plastic never actually seal. So why are these parts referenced with the name self-sealing porous plastic? Well, we'll answer this question and more in the next two minutes. Hi, my name is Ken Milam. I'm an application engineer here at Thermopore. Welcome to Thermo TV. In this series, we'll take a look at the material science behind self-sealing porous plastic and explain in detail why these materials are often referred to as just that, self-sealing porous plastics. Our discussion will involve three parts. First, we'll discuss raw materials and raw material blends. Then we'll describe the additive that enables the self-sealing functionality. Lastly, we'll describe what happens when a fluid comes into contact with a self-sealing porous plastic part. In the end, you'll be able to determine for yourself if the term self-sealing porous plastic is appropriate. Okay, so our discussion begins with the fact that the raw materials used to make porous plastic vary depending on the part specification. In some cases, a single raw material is used to make a part. In other cases, multiple raw materials might be blended together to make the part. In the case with our self-sealing porous plastic, a blend is constructed from a plastic raw material and a functional additive. The plastic fulfills two important roles. First, the plastic serves as the foundation for the part's porosity. It creates the internal open cell structure of the part. Second, the plastic functions as a binder to maintain the additive's presence in the part's matrix. A blend of this type can be easily demonstrated by mixing two materials together. Imagine the white material as our plastic raw material. Imagine the green material as our functional additive. By blending these two materials together, we ensure a homogeneous raw material blend. After subjecting the blend to a thermal cycle, the functional additive is trapped and incorporated into the part's porous structure. So you might be wondering by now, what's the additive? Well, it goes by the name carboxyl methyl cellulose, but fortunately for us, it's simply referred to as CMC. While there are a number of different grades of CMC, industrial grades, food grades, pharmaceutical grades, etc., they all accomplish one important role. Once CMC goes into solution, it thickens or it increases the liquid's viscosity. Now, let's imagine a part that requires a filter or a vent that should, be, that should function until, until the liquid makes contact with the part. This scenario is typical of the previous applications that we mentioned, pipette tip filters, catheter vents, and hospital suction canister valves. In all these cases, the porous plastic component acts as a filter or a vent until the part comes in, into contact with the liquid. As the fluid starts to attempt to make its way through the porous matrix, the CMC is dissolved in the liquid and in a nearly instantaneous fashion, the liquid's viscosity located in the porous plastic part increases. Fortunately, there's a direct correlation between the amount of force that's required to push a fluid through a porous media and the liquid's viscosity. As one goes up, so does the other. When the viscosity of the fluid increases appreciably, the fluid flow through the part discontinues. This gives the appearance, emphasis on the word appearance, of a part that magically seals, hence the terminology self-sealing porous plastic, even though the porous structure of the porous plastic part remains virtually unchanged. So, now back to our first question. Is the term self-sealing porous plastic accurate? I think the best way to answer that question is by stating that if it looks like self-sealing porous plastic and if it behaves like self-sealing porous plastic, then it probably contains CMC. With that, I think I'll conclude this edition of Thermo TV. Stay on the lookout for additional videos by signing up for our RSS feed. And as always, if you have additional questions or if there's some topics that you'd like to see added to the Thermo TV channel, give us a call or drop us a line. For now, I'm Ken Milam saying thanks for watching this installment of Thermo TV. We'll see you next time.